correct answer. Let me clarify this in the video further. Do not go away anywhere and listen to this crucial information. Vaccine. What is a vaccine? Vaccine is essentially any molecule which is either in the live form or in the dead inactivated form or in a form which is essentially inducing antibody, which we talked about earlier. What are the types of COVID vaccines which are available? We have a whole bunch of vaccines right now which are in the phase three trials, but which are the ones that you are reading about it day in and day out? You are reading about China's vaccine, Sinovac, Sinopharm. You're reading about Moderna and Pfizer, which has been by the German company BioNTech. You're reading about AstraZeneca's Oxford vaccine. Now, each of the vaccine, and also you're hearing about the Sputnik vaccine, each of the vaccine has a unique methodology, unique mechanism. Let me get that clearly and sorted. And what are the real contraindications of taking any vaccine? Quite frankly, if you ask me, please do not focus on the real contraindications, they are extremely rare, unless, unless contraindication means where you cannot give the vaccine, unless you had a severe allergic reaction, also called as anaphylaxis, to any of the vaccine components in your life. If you did not have that, that is an absolute contraindication. There is also severe combined immune deficiency syndrome. Obviously, when you will take the vaccine, somebody will talk to you about it. That is when you don't take it. Other than that, essentially, let me come back to the types of the vaccines, okay? You're safe. You, you can take it, right? Now, obviously, we will talk about the efficacy, which means how effective it is. But before that, what are these types of the vaccines? There are essentially four varieties of vaccines right now, which you and me have the options to avail. One, inactivated part of the vaccine, also called the subunit, also called the spike protein, which we all have been seeing. You know, we have been seeing this nice little ball with all the spikes around all through 2020. That spike protein is injected. Okay, that's number one, which is China's Sinopharm vaccine, which I have taken. The second one is the one which is the plasmid. Now, nothing to be worried about things, uh, big, big words like plasmid. What is plasmid is essentially a small genetic molecule which is injected and which is also doing the same job as what the inactivated subunit is going to do. The third one is vector transmitted virus or the protein. The protein is essentially packed into a vector, which can be an adenovirus vector. There are so many vectors which are essentially the route through which you can get it injected. And that is what we are talking about, the Oxford vaccine. So this is what is claiming to be the three types of the vaccines, right? What is Sputnik? Sputnik is also a vector uh, transmitted spike protein virus, okay? Sputnik is part of the Russian uh, vaccine campaign. Now, all the trials have to go through the phases and definitely prove that it is safe, first of all, okay? Safety is essentially important. And then comes how effective it is. Can it help me to build the antibody and fight against the virus when I get a COVID? Okay, that is essentially the two questions which all the trials have to answer. The first trial, first phase begins with a laboratory driven experiment, then goes to phase two, then goes to phase three, where there are volunteers who participate in this exercise to understand the safety and then to understand the efficacy or how effective it is. Now, all the trials have finished their phase three of the ones which we are talking and which is now ready to be administered to common people. So going back again to the types of the vaccines that we have, one is the inactivated subunit spike protein component, which is the Sinopharm or the Sinovac, which is from China. We have the two viruses, Moderna and two viral vaccines, Moderna and Pfizer, which are the plasmid type of the vaccine. And then we have the vector transmit vector um, supported, which is the AstraZeneca's virus. Now, if you read all the media and the news, you might be wondering, ah, this vaccine is 90% efficacy. Well, this person, this vaccine is 70% efficacy. Well, yes, there is a difference between the antibody production, but for the FDA, for the US FDA to approve it, they need a barrier of 50% efficacy, which Again, I will repeat which all of these virus vaccines have crossed. So am I taking something which is safe? 
And the answer is very, very clearly yes. Am I taking something which is effective? Yes, if you are taking one of the inactivated viral vaccines, you have about 70% roughly efficacy or effectiveness. While if you are taking Moderna or Pfizer, you have about 90 to 95% efficacy. Is there a difference between the two? As I mentioned, the difference is in the technique. The plasmid is a very new technique. It's a very, very uh, modernized AI-driven technique, artificial intelligence-driven technique, and very sophisticated and novel method. While inactivated viral vaccines we have known for ages, right? We have the flu vaccine, which we take. We have the polio vaccine, which was uh, there. So we have both the live attenuated, which means you get the virus, you make it not so effective, not as live, or you take the unit, subunit of it, and then inject it. Either of those, we have loads of vaccines which we have already known them, which has been effective, which has proven its efficacy. We take, all of us take hepatitis B vaccine. We, all of us take yellow fever if we have to travel to Africa. All of us have taken measles, mumps, rubella. We take tetanus toxoid. We have taken in our lives polio. We take BCG. And if I'm talking about the Asian part of the world, which is much more believer of the vaccines, we pretty much, we have a rigid vaccination schedules all through the time the baby is born until the age of about 10. So bottom line, is it safe to take the vaccine? And this is for all my patients. Uh, since I'm a neurologist, everybody is concerned about the neurological side effects. Now, let me clarify this because this is essentially very, very important when we talk about the serious adverse effect of the virus. What is serious adverse effect right you may have seen the media talking about two or three diseases and i will highlight that one of them is transverse myelitis of the spinal cord where the spinal cord is swollen or inflamed the second one is the called the guillain barre syndrome or the gbs where the nerves get infected okay and the third or inflamed and the third one a very important one is the one which is facial palsy so these are the ones which you would have seen reading in the media, news. Okay, these are not all of them are serious adverse event. One of them called transverse myelitis or myelitis in the brain, what we call uh, as could be serious, right? But the essentially the number, number, again, please focus. The number is very, very, very low. In fact, it is not more than even the community prevalence of the disease, which means you are not adding an additional factor by taking the vaccine. So coming back to the serious adverse events, neurologically, okay, from the brain and spine point of view, please understand it is extremely rare and almost unlikely if you are going to take the vaccine. So do not worry about any serious adverse event. Yes, a little bit of soreness while you take the injection, a little bit of feeling tired because your body is trying to fight against it, build the antibodies, that's common, right? A little bit of fatigue, a little bit of, uh, maybe a little bit of mild fever, that, and that is still okay. Again, you are not injecting live COVID vaccine, live COVID virus anywhere. So you're not getting a COVID illness. Remember this thing, you are not getting a COVID illness. What you are doing is you are essentially transferring a subunit of the virus and then allowing the antibodies to be formed against the virus. So be confident, go ahead and take the vaccine. We all will have to protect each other. We will have to be safe. We will have to grow as a community together. And vaccine has given us this chance. So I took mine uh, and I'm completely fine. I pledge you will do soon. And if you have any questions, anything at all, please feel free to write to me at uh, the below mentioned number. Thank you. Do subscribe. I will bring some fascinating neurological facts and keep uh, listening to it. Thanks again.